Hey, 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 family, Marshawn Alanio here. Thank you so much for coming back and watching and just rocking with your girl. So we're gonna talk about here's why your marriage doesn't make you happy. Now, I wanna thank you all who are not married and you continuously watch my videos because I'm so, so grateful. I know that if you take what you're learning here and actually apply it to your relationship and your marriage, then things will be awesome in your relationship. Um, of course, you're gonna have ups and downs and there is that getting to know period, but overall, you will have the tools that you need in order to build a very successful romantic relationship. So now, for those of you who are finding me for the very first time, my name is Marshawn Olani. I am a life and relationship strategist and I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated because my mission, yes, my mission is to decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate one coaching conversation at a time. Speaking of coaching conversations, I have designed a free 30-minute coaching conversation if you are interested and need help with your marriage or need help with your relationship. And guess what? If you need help with yourself, the link is in the description box below. Click the link, sign up for your free 30 minute coaching conversation where I will help you discover and correct one thing, one thing in those 30 minutes. Now here's the thing. I can give you the solution, but if you never decide to apply the thing that you learn, then it doesn't matter. So I am imploring and asking you to only sign up if you are ready and sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're ready to change your relationship and or marriage all around. Again, I'm Marshawn Oladio. So now let's jump into today's content. Here's why your marriage does not make you happy. The first thing is you do not speak up when you are upset. You allow things to just pile up. You allow things to just fester and build and build and build and build. And it's those little things that are just consistently building and building and building. Before you know it, now you got a mountain of things that are annoying you, that are frustrating you. And if you just actually slow down and think about the things that you want to say to your spouse, the things that are annoying you, the things that are frustrating you, and have a conversation about those things, then guess what? Those little things will stop piling up and all of that mountain of junk will no longer be there. And guess what? If you do this early enough, if you learn this early enough and implement this early enough, that pile that you keep tripping over as you walk over your carpet will never build up in the first place. So you must learn to speak up for the things that you want, the things that you like, the things that you dislike, the things that you hate, the things that you're like, no, no, no. But you cannot allow these things to just stay in here. And all of a sudden now you're mumbling, right? You're mumbling because you're frustrated. You're mumbling because you didn't speak up. You're actually pissed off at yourself that you keep going through the same thing over and over again. But it's because you won't speak up for yourself. Which brings me to point number two. Your marriage doesn't make you happy because you think and even believe that your spouse is a mind reader. Which in fact, he or she is not a mind reader. Many of us have experienced relationships before we got into our marriage. And because you experienced those relationships... You have a tendency to take those things that you loved from those relationships and automatically dump them on your spouse. But the thing is, your spouse don't know that these are the things that made you super ecstatic and happy. And now you're dumping them on him. You're just expecting him to know or her to know. And it doesn't work that way. That voice that God gave you that you're not using you must use it because mind reading will never work. You will continue to be frustrated and annoyed because you are not speaking up, because you are not sharing the things that you loved over here in this relationship. And now you are just expecting that this is supposed to happen. He's supposed to just know. She's supposed to just know. Well, guess what? It doesn't work like that. Sorry to bust your bubble. Doesn't work like that. You must use this. 
That is the only way that your spouse is going to know what he or she is supposed to be doing for you to make you happy. If you never speak up, they're never going to know. So stop believing that your spouse is a mind reader. Make a list of things that you want to share with him or with her that are going to make you happy, that is going to make you feel loved. Because here's the thing, each one of us are trying to win with our spouse. The only way to win with your spouse is if you have the blueprint. The blueprint is here. The blueprint is writing it out and passing along the information. So he or she can see it so they can win with you. Because if they don't have the information, how can he or she win with you? It's impossible. They cannot. So stop believing that your spouse is a mind reader and actually speak up and give them the information so they can win with you. As simple as that. It's the small things that if we tweak these things, if we learn to do better in these things, that guess what? Our relationship and our marriage was, will be that much more healthy. The third thing to think about. Constant arguing. No relationship or marriage is happy if you are constantly arguing. Why do you feel that you have to battle one another? You don't. As I mentioned in point number one, you must talk about and speak about the things that frustrate you. Those difficult conversations that you keep sweeping under the rug or that keep coming to the surface. The reason why they keep coming to the surface is because you have yet to bring a solution to the table. They have not been resolved which is why you're constantly arguing about the same thing over and over again. Well, guess what? To eradicate the arguments, bring a solution to the table. And here's the thing about solutions. Your solution may be over here. And then as your spouse is listening to you, their solution may be over here. So it can't just be either one of you's way. At some point, it's going to be compromised where you guys meet somewhere in the middle. It could be a little over here or a little over here, but neither one of you will get 100% of the way that you felt the solution should happen. So find a way to compromise and come somewhere in the middle so you can guys can stop arguing over this same thing, over that same point or points or things or difficulties that you keep running into in your marriage. So constant arguing, not sexy. <laughs> Number four, I already brought up frustrated, annoyance, but I wanna add in resentful. And the reason why you're constantly feeling like this, other than the fact that maybe you're constantly arguing about the same thing, right? You're not feeling, um, you're not feeling like, what am I trying to say? You, you haven't been speaking up for yourself, right? The main reason why I put this one on the list is because you're taking care of everybody but yourself. So think about the things that you must take care of, that you put on your to-do list. Are you ever on your to-do list? I mean, really think about that. Most people don't put themselves on the to-do list. But guess what? You should be putting yourself on the to-do list. You should be trying to Pin in, and I didn't say pencil, pencil you can erase. You should be trying to pin in yourself on your own schedule and make it non-negotiable. However much time that you can afford to spend with, your, with yourself so you can recharge and reset. So when you come out, you can actually come out and help everybody else from your cup that's running over versus from your cup where you feel depleted. Right? Does that make sense? Please let me know down in the comment section below if that makes sense because I feel that it makes sense, right? But if you are annoyed and frustrated and even resentful towards your partner, think about how many conversations you brought to the forefront and asked for a little bit of help. Because again, that might be that mind reading. Well, he's supposed to just know I need some me time. He get me time, but he speaks up and say, I'm going to, I'm going to hang out with the boys. I'm going to do whatever. He's getting his me time, but you don't do that because you think that you have to be everything to everybody, but you're forgetting to be everything to yourself first, because if you give to everybody, right, 
when are you giving to yourself? And I'll bring up that old cliche because it's actually true, which is when you get on the airplane, right? When that oxygen mask is about to come down, who do they tell you to put it on? First, you. If Even if you were a small child, a baby, an infant, somebody with a disability, you have to take care of you first. So if your oxygen mask is not on, y'all both going to pass out. Y'all both going to perish. You must take care of you first before you take care of everybody else. Because if you are always last on your list or never even make your list, you're always going to be frustrated. You're always going to be annoyed. And when it goes towards your spouse, you're going to start to be resentful. And that's the first step toward the divorce. Think about it. Next thing. Number five. Your friendship has gone out the window. Think about it. Your friends, the people that you call your BFFs or the people that you always like to be around. You like to be around those people because they make you feel good about yourself. You have a fun time. You guys are constantly laughing. You're sharing stories. Maybe you're even being vulnerable with one another, but they're making it a safe space for you to be vulnerable and you can just open up and be you. Well, that happens because the friendship is good. The environment was safe for you to say whatever, to react and be whomever you shown up to be. Well, guess what? In your marriage, it needs to be the same way. Because all of that time that you spent getting to know one another, asking questions and going out on fun dates and doing all of this fun stuff, this is when your friendship was starting to build and even mature. And so now we get into the marriage and we're allowing all of these things from life to come and bust us up the head and just beat us down. And we got the kids beating us down. And now we got COVID beating us down. And now we got these masks all the time beating us down. Where we're allowing all of this stuff to beat us down and we're not making each other a priority. And yes, you may be home more often, but if you have small children, maybe you are now the teacher. Or if you're both home at the same time and you're in different rooms because you guys still have to work, Plus homeschool. When are you guys having time for just you? And so maybe your time for just you needs to be 10 or 15 minutes in this season within your relationship. But if you guys do not continuously find time to connect with one another, you won't be with one another. That friendship needs to continue. The getting to know needs to continue. The date nights need to continue. Even if that's you guys just sitting there holding hands and conversing. It doesn't, date night does not always mean that you guys have to spend money and leave your home. What you are doing is resetting your relationship, is reconnecting with each other, is building your friendship. And so if you find yourself not to be happy in your marriage, this could be a reason why. And then also a side piece of information, and I, I'm pretty sure I've said this here before, which is Dr. John Gottman from the Gottman Institute has been studying couples for three plus decades now. And the newest research that he's come up with is he's found that a lot of couples that are no longer having sex or having minimal sex, enjoyable sex, that is, it's because their friendship has gone down the tubes. And so if you want to have more sex in your relationship, of course, there can be health issues and all that stuff, right? But I'm talking about two healthy people who were having sex before and then there's no health issues, but you guys are kind of I don't, I don't want to sleep with you. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want you to touch me. I don't want nothing to do with that. It's because your friendship is going out the window. So if you want more sex, if you want to repair what was broken, spend time having fun with your friend. Spend time getting to know what they've been doing, what they've been thinking about, what's been keeping them up at night. If you notice that they've been up at night. Find out who your friend actually is in this moment. Number six, constant complaints. 
then the constant complaints is coming from no solutions. So if you always find yourself complaining about something, it's because you are not literally feeling heard, which is actually point number seven. Uh, I said seven. Point number seven. So six and seven go hand in hand. The constant complaints because you do not have any solution to what you're complaining about. And I'm never going to say not to complain because I do feel that your spouse needs to know what is bothering you. What I am going to say is to add, this is plus, add a solution to the complaint. So go and complain and say what was bothering you and why it was bothering you and how to not bother you any longer. And that how is the solution. How could I stop bothering you in this area? That's the solution. Because most people just go with the complaints. They just go with the complaints and they think something is going to change. But it's nothing but the complaints. And after a while, the person that keeps hearing the complaints don't want to hear nothing. What they really want you to do is shut up because there are no solutions. And it's the tiny tweaks, as I mentioned earlier, that you need to change. Because maybe neither one of you are thinking, okay, hold on. What's the solution? I hear you. I'm actually tired of having this same conversation over and over again. So what can we do to stop having the same conversation? More than likely, neither one of you are thinking that. And it's the small tweaks. Go and complain, bring a solution. And as I mentioned before, the solution doesn't mean that you're going to get your way or that he is going to get his way or vice versa. Somewhere in the middle, the compromise. So you can stop complaining. And as I already mentioned, number seven, your marriage is not making you as happy as it needs to be because you don't feel heard which is why you're constantly complaining, which is why you're constantly annoyed and frustrated, which is why you guys are constantly arguing. You're not feeling heard. And so if you are the person who your spouse has been opening up and they have been sharing things with you, but you guys keep going through the same roller coaster, you're on the same hamster wheel over and over and over again, it's because your partner, your spouse is not feeling heard. And so maybe you're cutting them off too quick because you're tired of the conversation. So you're just shutting down. I'm done with that conversation. Not feeling heard. And then you wonder why another week or so they got to bring the same thing up. It's because you didn't take the time, give them enough respect to hear them out. It doesn't mean that they want you to solve anything in that moment. But again, if you come with more solutions than leaving all of these complaints and arguments just floating around in the air, come with more solutions, then guess what? All of that will fall to the wayside, never to be seen again, because we all want to feel heard, understood, appreciated, loved, and respect. And that, is, it doesn't matter the sex. We all need that connection. We all need to feel heard. We all need to feel understood, respected, loved. And when we're not getting these things in our marriage, when we're not getting these things in our relationship, this is where the breakdown comes into play. And guess what? Everything that I talked about today is under the umbrella of communication. This is one of the reasons why communication is so important. Yes, it sounds so cliche, but the breakdowns in marriages can be corrected by being better communicators. So now what I want to know, the question of the day is, which one of these are you going to work on? Which one of these do you know could literally, if you start doing this thing, it could change the trajectory of your relationship and marriage around? I want to know down in the comment section below. I'm Marshawn Olanio, your favorite life and relationship strategist, and I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. Again, if you need some help with any of these things we discussed today or something else within your marriage or relationship, sign up for your free 30-minute coaching conversation so we can get you from where you're at today to where you want to be in the relationship with yourself first and then the relationship with your spouse. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it, and I will see you next video. Bye.